Hey, welcome back to the Krabby Dice. Today we're looking at Civilization A New Dawn, which is a very lightweight 4x game. Uh, this is going to be the setup and rules breakdown. Click on the link below for my thoughts and the playthrough video. Uh, before we get started, please like, subscribe and comment on my videos. That would be fantastic. Let's get started. Hi, welcome to the Civilization New Dawn setup. So I'm going to be showing you the setup using the default map from the rulebook, but feel free to click on the link below to click to the end of the video where I'll show you how the players can set up the maps themselves in a more advanced variant. All right. Um, so once you set out the map, whether it was with this default map or the advanced variant, everywhere that you see an icon, you're literally going to find a token and place it on the board. All right. So start off with the resource icons here find the representation tile and place it on the board do the exact same thing for the barbarians which are the red ones make sure to put the correct letters on the game board where they belong okay next for the wonders and city states do the exact same thing find their representation in the game box and place them on the board okay next only for the city states find the cards that represent those city states and put them around the game board for example here i'm playing with brussels so there's going to be two cards for brussels on the side of the board Every single city state is going to have exactly two cards. So, for example, here I'm playing with three different city states. So, I'm going to have three sets of two cards each. Other things you'll find around the game board you're going to have your dice, you're going to have your barbarian tile. Just connect it somewhere along the game board so we know when we roll the die which direction the barbarians are going to go. Put the rest of your resource tokens on the side of the game board. Uh, next, for the bonus cards, we're going to play with exactly three every time. Toss the rest in the game box. And next, we're going to talk about our monuments here. All right, so they come in four different colors and each deck is exactly the same. They're all six cards each. So you can have two cards for the modern era, two cards for the medieval era, and two cards for the ancient era. As you might have guessed, you're gonna shuffle the two modern cards, put them at the bottom of the deck, then shuffle your two medieval cards, put them in the middle, and then shuffle the two ancient cards and put them on top. All right, flip the first cards over, but if you're playing less than four players, toss the first card of each deck, which is an ancient uh, monument from the game, and then flip over the first card. I am playing here as a three player uh, map. All right, that's it for the map. All right, next we'll set up the player board area here. So give each player their focus bar, which will tell you what color you're playing. And in that color, you'll get your caravans, tokens, and cities. Okay, you're gonna have a deck of focus cards. You're gonna have your tech dial, make sure it's pointing to zero. Your diplomacy cards, you're gonna have four of them. And figure out who first player is and give them this sort of dial and make sure it's pointing to the helmet with the star on it okay now what i would suggest is give each player two civilizations let them pick between the two and put the other one into the game box and that civilization will tell you which focus one cards go into each slot of your focus bar so here you have one two three four five and it'll tell you which of those cards go below your focus bar here for your foreign trade uh card you can actually place your caravan right on top okay lastly what i would suggest in reverse turn order figure out where your capitals are going to start those are going to go where the stars are indicated on the board and now you're ready to get started all right welcome to the civilization new dawn rules breakdown so we already know from the name of the game that this is a civ game but how does it actually run and flow well it uses a very unique river system to dictate how powerful your selected action is going to be so let's look take a look at that now before talking about all the different actions that affect the game board all right so we're each going to have a focus board here and each of the five different possible actions you can perform in the game are depicted by cards below it all right you can also tell on the card there's a little icon on the top left to sort of tell you what the uh, action sort of does all right now whenever you perform any of the actions the actual power of the action is always depicted right above it on the focus board okay so just as a random example here let's choose science let's say i want to do the science action what the science card is actually going to say is gain science points equal to the number above it on the focus board all right so i'll gain three science points added to my dial and then whenever you perform an action that card is going to go to the front of the line and everything's going to shift to the right i'll show you with an example here And there you go. So this is how the river system kind of flows. So you're going to see that the actions on the right become more powerful and the ones on the left are less powerful because you have taken that action recently. All right, so let's say next turn I would do the pottery action. I'll pick it up, perform the action. It deals with the terrain up here, but then everything would slide to the right. 
and then pottery will go to the front of the line. All right, so you see, this is how you cycle your actions, and you're just going to keep going and going. So every turn, you're going to perform one action, select the card, it'll go to the front of the line, everything shifts to the right. All right, that's what you're doing on your turn. Now, how does the game flow? Well, you're going to start with the first player, and they're going to be the one with the dial, and they're always going to keep this dial, just to indicate that they're first player. And you're all going to take one action at a time until the end game is triggered. So just keep going around and around and around. All right. And how does the game end? Well, that's when you win. How do you win? Well, you're going to be the first one with a token on each of these bonus cards. All right. At the start of your turn, if you have a token on each of these cards, you have won the game. All right. If multiple people have done this, then the tiebreaker is whoever has the most monuments built during the game. All right. So now that we know how to win, how the action flow sort of works, let's talk about each of those five actions and how it affects the game. All right. The first action we're going to tackle is the culture action denoted by the music symbol on the top left of the card. All right. This action is all about adding control markers to the game board next to your cities. Okay. The power of the action is dictated on the slot that it was triggered. So for example, if I triggered it in slot three, I'd be able to add a token on a forest of hills or a plains but I wouldn't be able to add a token on a desert or a mountain so I'll show you with an example I would be able in slot 3 to add a token on a forest and a plains and I wouldn't be able to add it to either of these mountains now tokens always get put on the board unreinforced side up if you cover up a natural wonder or a resource token you keep those tokens in your play area in front of you and there are some places you can never place tokens for example water on top of a barbarian tile and on top of any city and also city states. All right, next we're going to talk about the science action was denoted by the little flask in the top left of the card. And this action allows you to gain science points equal to the slot or focus column that it was triggered under. So for example, here, if I triggered science under three, I'll gain three science points on my dial. And that's it. Now, whenever this dial hits one of the flags, that's when you can upgrade your actions okay so whenever you hit a two for example you'll grab all your level two focus cards and replace that action on your board so for example if I wanted a better culture action I would take out my old culture card and replace it with the new one all right the next action we're gonna tackle is the economy action denoted by a little dollar sign the top left of the card this action is all about moving your caravan across the game map to try to end on a city-state or an any opponent city Okay, so I'll show you how that works. The card's going to tell you how many spaces the caravan can move. And the caravan, if it's on the card, means it has to start from a mature city or your capital city. Okay, but it can't just move anywhere. The hexes that he's able to move onto is dictated on the slot where this action was triggered. For example, if I trigger this action under slot 3, that means my caravan can move on forest, hills, and grassland spaces but not desert and mountains so let's look at an example let's say the card says I have a movement of three I can go one two three moving only on those uh, terrains that I mentioned previously okay now if you have an upgraded version of the card or you already have caravans on the board let's just say again I trigger this effect on slot three so I have a movement of three again move the caravan that's on the board one two three Okay, so now we're going to talk about the two benefits you get when you go on city-state and opponent cities. Okay, whether you end your movement on city-states or opponent cities, you're going to return that caravan back to the card, which means it returns back to your capital. His job is basically done. After that, you're going to get two benefits. Four city-states, which are the ones printed on the board, you're going to get two trade goods and you're going to place them on the focus card indicated on that city state. So for example, here it's culture. So you're going to find your culture card, say this one, and add two trade goods to it. The other benefit you're going to get is you're going to get that city state's diplomacy card. So you're going to look up here and you're going to take the one that's tied to that city state. And this is one's going to go next to your leader and it's going to give you a special power for the rest of the game. Now let's talk about ending your movement on an opponent city. Again, you're going to return the caravan to the card. And this time you're going to get two benefits. 
one of them is two trade goods but this time you get to assign these however you like on all your cards so you can assign them to your industry for example and your culture or you can assign both of them to your science you're free to choose however you like the other benefit you're going to get is you're going to go through that opponent's diplomacy deck and you're going to take one of the cards all right that's going to give you a special ability against that player for the rest of the game okay now in the future if you visit that player's city again you have the option to give him back your current diplomacy card that you took from him and take a different one okay but you can never have more than one diplomacy card of a player at any time those are the two things you're trying to do with caravans all right the next action we're going to talk about is the industry action denoted by the gear in the top left of the card so this card lets you do one of two things either build cities on the map or build wonder cards in the bottom right over here okay so let's talk about cities first so i'm going to talk about a couple of restrictions before i teach you how this <laughs> how the building actually works so you can never build a building on any token that's on the board except for your friendly units okay so you can't build on natural wonders on barbarian spaces on opponent cities or on opponents tokens okay second restriction is you can never build next to any city on the board even your own or an opponent's or a city state so you can't build anywhere around there anywhere around there or anywhere around your own city all right now to figure out the location where you can build your city you're going to look at your focus board and the slot that you trigger that action card is the terrains that you'll be able to build on so you can build on a desert or a forest or a hill or a grasslands all right so i wouldn't be able to build on a mountain or count through a mountain so for example if i had these two cities on the board i will not be able to build on this grassland because i have to count through this mountain to get to this space all right so this is illegal all right so Technically, the only viable choices I have right now is to build it here, to build it here, to build it here, or to build it here. All right, after I make my choice, it's the next player's turn. Uh, now, the other option on the card was to build a wonder. So to do that, you're going to focus in on the wonder you want to build, and on the bottom left, it's going to tell you how many production points you need to build that wonder. For example, Hanging Gardens is eight. All right, how do you get to eight? A couple of choices. First is the slot where you trigger the action is gonna have a number. That's your base production level, all right? So you can have four. After that, you can turn in trade goods that you have on the card to add plus one. So let's say you had three tokens on there, so you can get to seven. And next, if you turn in any of the resources on the bottom right from your personal supply, into the general supply you can add plus two to that value so with a four and two of these tokens you'd be able to build a natural wonder all right for example once you get a natural wonder you got to do two things first you keep this card next to your leader and it's going to give you a permanent ability for the rest of the game and second you actually need an empty slot under one of your cities to actually place that wonder so for example you find a city and you place that wonder underneath there you go all right, the last action to talk about is the military action denoted by the shield in the top left of the card. So when you do this action, you have a choice between one of two things. First, you can reinforce tokens you have on the board. And for that, you're going to look at the column where you triggered the action. And the amount of tokens you can reinforce is the number above it. So for example, here, three. So take any three tokens you have on the board and flip them to their reinforced side. This will help you when defending against barbarians or other players. Okay. The other option you have on the card is actually to perform an attack. Okay, The most complicated part of this game is act calculating the defense strength of what you're attacking. So I'm going to tackle that in the next section. But the way the attack system works is very simple. The attacker is going to figure out his strength and it's based on three values. First, again, look at the column where it was triggered. You're going to have a base attack strength plus one die roll plus any bonuses that he might have with cards diplomacy cards or anything else in his play area and that's going to be his base attack now the defender is going to roll one die he's going to add that defense strength that i just talked about which is going to be different for everything that you want to attack 
all right you're going to compare and then both sides have the opportunity to add trade goods that might be on their cards to add plus one to their attack and then you figure out who wins so if the attacker has more they're going to win the attack and get a benefit if the defender has the same or more they're going to win and the attack is pushed back all right now i'm going to talk about each different component you can attack and how you calculate their defensive strength all right the first thing you can attack in the game is a city state all right, if you want to attack city state, its base defense is eight. So to get its total defense, you're gonna roll a die and add eight to it and try to beat that. Okay. If you do succeed, you're gonna do three things. First, you're gonna take the token, add it to your focus card indicated on the city state. So I'm gonna add this on my culture card, for example, like this. Next, you're gonna take one of your cities and place it on that city state uh, location. All right, next, anybody that might have a diplomacy card for that city state, it gets returned back to the supply and put face down. Nobody can have those anymore. All right, and lastly, just to give you the explanation of how this works is every time you trigger this ability, this acts like a permanent plus one trade good. So read the bottom here. The next thing you can attack is a barbarian. So the barbarian's defense is 100% tied to the current terrain that he's on so if he's on a grassland it's one on hills it's two forest is three desert is four and finally mountains is five so beat a barbarian you beat that defense plus a die roll if you're above it you're going to do two things remove the uh, barbarian token from the game and second you're going to get one trade good to put on any of your cards all right next you can attack an opponent's token and the way you calculate their defense is the again just like a barbarian they're gonna have the base defense based on the terrain below it so for example if i'm attacking here it's a four so it'd be three plus any reinforced tokens around it including itself so for example here it would be three plus two because there's a reinforced token here and a reinforced token here so the total would be five plus a die roll compare if you win what you get is you get to remove their token and replace it with one of your own unreinforced tokens okay if you do take over a token that was on top of a natural wonder you replace it with your own token and you take that natural wonder from that opponent next is you can attack an opponent's city and the way this works is exactly like a token except that you double the terrain bonus so in this example here it would be four times two eight plus one because there's one reinforced token all around so it's nine plus a die roll if you win, the benefit is you get to replace that city with one of your own. Now, if there was a wonder on that city, well, guess what? You get to take it over and that opponent will have to give you that wonder card and you gain a new ability. And the last thing you can attack is finally an opponent's capital. So what's going to happen is just like a regular city, you're going to double the defense of the terrain plus any uh, reinforced tokens all around. So in this example here would be two plus zero so if you can beat a two then you sort of defeat the, the capital now you never replace a capital with your own city what you're going to do is you're going to steal two trade tokens from that player's focus area and put on your own focus cards plus if there was any um wonders under that city you get to actually take it over by moving it to one of your other cities on the game board all right again taking that card from that player because you now gain that ability and there you have it. <laughs> so you're each going to take an action at a time, going around the table again and again, till somebody triggers the end game by having a token on each of the cards uh, depicted here. All right. The only thing that I didn't mention up to now is the events that happen every single round. The first player has this token and every single time it's his turn at the start of his turn, he's going to rotate this one time to the right. So these are different things that can affect the game board. So most of these deal with barbarians. So for example, whenever you hit the helmet with the arrow, it means the barbarians are going to move. So the first player is going to take a die, roll it, and move the barbarians in the direction indicated on the barbarian dial. So for example, here it would move everyone to the bottom left. All right, I'm going to show you the different things that can happen when barbarians move. If a barbarian moves into a city, it gets destroyed and the barbarian takes it over. If it moves into a caravan, the caravan gets destroyed. If it hits a reinforced token, the token just gets flipped over and it doesn't move any further. If it hits water, it actually skips that spot and attacks the next spot. So here it would attack a unreinforced token, which means it gets removed from the game and it takes it over. 
and if it hits the edge of a board it actually repels in the opposite direction so it'll go to the top right and the last thing that can happen is it can attack your capital which just means you have to discard two trade goods and then it will get repelled in the opposite direction okay both of the helmets with arrows work the same way the other event here is the one with the star which means all the barbarians respawn so if there is no token on a barbarian space and it was removed by being attacked it gets respawned and enters the board again all right but if somebody had built a city or there'd be a focus token on it then that barbarian would not get returned to the board and the last event is the crate over here and each player is going to return uh, get a trade token for each mature city they have on the board all right they can place these on any other focus cards and the way you calculate a mature city is if a city is completely surrounded by their tokens it is considered a mature city so for example here blue would get a token and in this example red would get a token because water does not count as an available terrain and there you go we finally got through all the rules so click on the link below to go directly to the playthrough or stay tuned i'm going to teach you how to build the advanced map right now all right the first thing we're going to want to do is set up our map all right it is a civ game so let's create the advanced variant i know in the rule book there's the default map play with that on your first and second go around i'm actually going to play with that map during the playthrough but i'm going to show you how to set up the advanced variant in case you want to play it that way and then we'll set up the rest of the game okay so first thing you're going to do is there's going to be four tiles uh, that have a star icon this is where we're going to put our capital city so you're going to give one to each player randomly doesn't really matter the one that you're not playing with if you're playing with less than four return to the game box all right after that you're gonna have two different sets of tiles all right you're gonna have four tiles with natural wonders these are the icons here with uh, that look uh, kind of weird <laughs> long octagons and uh, they're the same on both sides they have natural wonders on both sides so there's four of those and again with the city state same thing it's the one with the octagon with the color underneath there's a city state on both sides okay you're gonna take two randomly from both and this is gonna create our core for the map all right the rest just add them to the non-special tiles here and we're gonna hand those out in a little bit and the way you set up your core is first you're gonna make sure they're all on the same side so here they're all on the a side which is perfect all right and then you're gonna set up your core by alternating sides all right? let me shuffle these a bit better now we're gonna set them up so you're gonna have one pointing up one pointing down I'm just going to alternate. Oops, this one's got to point up. And this one's got to point down. And there you go, that's our core. Now, to keep track that this is your core, just use anyone's pieces and just uh, put a token on them just to remind you that this is the core. Okay, after that, for all the rest of the tiles that remain, give them a shuffle and just hand out two to every single player. And again, if you're less than four, return the rest to the game box. All right, here we go. Now we're going to spend turns placing our map tiles on the board here to make it grow and sort of dictate where things are going to be, sort of like a 4x game. Okay, uh, you pick randomly who's going to start. So let's say this player and you're ready to go. He can just place any tile that he wants and you can even flip them over. It's just the core tiles that all have to be on the same side. The rest, you can flip them over and do what you want all right there's just a couple of placement rules uh, when you place a tile four tiles must always touch the game map all right so you can't just have a, uh, a one tile or two tile connection by having it that like this you'd have to like sort of build it like this to at least have four tiles connected to a map piece you're putting on the board and you're trying to always connect to the core uh, map first and then you can build on the outside also if you have any uh open holes you have these lake tiles that you can use to fill in which i'll show you in a little bit all right so let's go uh with this player i'm just going to build it randomly obviously right now but you put more strategy into it than i'm doing it right now so let's say he builds it here so you're going to see here you're connecting four map tiles to this tile so we're okay now we're going to go to this player he's going to take a random one flip it over let's say he wants to build also like this whichever i'm going to grab this player here i'm going to take a random tile and let him put it like this this one's connecting one two three four five six seven so we're good 
and then you're just gonna keep going around. Now, whenever a player decides to play their capital tile, they're actually gonna play their capital city marker on top. All right? So let's say this player wants to go and he placed his marker here. So he's gonna play his capital city on here. And you're just gonna keep going until all the tiles are put out. And let's go like this. There you go. And I'll show you these holes that can appear. So let's say this one placed here. So he's gonna put their capital here. And you see here, there's a hole. So let's say this player played like this. There's a now a hole of two. So you're gonna grab these lake tiles and you're just gonna fill them in. Like that. See? So let's uh, fill these in up here. Let's say he put his capital there. Let's say this player played like this. And there you go, we're set up. So once you're set up, you'll just remove the tokens that you used to figure out what the core was. Okay. And you're gonna fill up the board. So you're gonna see the city states. You're gonna go into the box and get the city states that match that the icon. And you're gonna do the exact same thing for the natural wonders. So you're gonna look at the natural wonders. They all have specific tokens. You're gonna find those from the game box. And that's how you set up the map.